Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I am starting a new dress. The ducks are finding me very funny today. So I thought I would bring you guys along on the process from the complete start of a dress to the end. So I've actually been creating quite a few little dresses recently that I'm hoping um, I'm going to sell and you guys hopefully will buy them. So that's really exciting and this one will also be in the little spring collection. Um, this is pretty much the last one I'm going to make for the spring collection I think. Um, and then I'll see how it goes and then maybe bring some more out and yada yada yada. So I'm going to get started. I'm just going to check the time. So it's 2.51 on Sunday and we'll see how long this dress takes me to make. So this is the little sketch I have of the dress. I want the dress to have a really nice cowl neckline and some super puffy um oh, i think these are called um peasant sleeves not quite sure but it could be that i see you shush i'm trying to film i have a selection of two different fabrics that i might do this dress in um if it goes well with one i might just make it in the other so i've got oh my goodness Shush. So I usually work with cotton, but these two are both polyester crepe fabrics. It's not the nicest to cut out, um, but sewing, it's not too bad. So I'm going to start out with pattern cutting. This is pattern paper I have. You can buy it on more plan. God, I can't remember how many meters I bought of this, but I think it was about 50 quid for a huge roll of pattern paper. And this one is the extra wide. So it goes the width of two tables, which is super helpful when you have big skirt patterns to be cutting out. And then next to it here is my bodice block pattern, which I sort of developed myself. I did use the one from uni for ages, and then I just realized I was making so many changes anyway to get rid of all the weird darts they'd put in. Um, that I just did my own and sort of reduced the amount of darts. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how I lay this out on my pattern paper. So yeah, this is where I go from for all of my patterns. And then sleeves, I just completely make up <laughs> and just hope for the best. Um, I am going to be twirling this, which is basically doing a mock-up. Um, and I do that in this fabric down here, which is curtain lining. Um, uh, you can also buy that in bulk from Fabricland, so I will link that below. And I have a huge pile of scraps, and these are actually twirls in here as well, um, of the previous dresses I've made. When I was twirling at uni, you would have to make your twirls to like a really high standard, so that it was basically exactly how it would be made in the end but I don't do that anymore because <laughs> I feel like in my head I know exactly as long as it fits and the shape is right I know where I'm going to be going next and I also if one sleeve goes okay I won't do another sleeve because that's a waste of fabric on a twirl. Another tool that you will definitely need for pattern cutting is a pattern master. Now these are actually quite expensive they're like I think they're 26 pounds which for a ruler is a bit like, what? <laughs> but honestly, this is just a lifesaver. Like it's, yeah, you, you need this <laughs> if you're gonna do any sort of pattern cutting. And then a tape measure is also very handy to have for measuring curves. You'll then also want some paper cutting scissors. These are only used for cutting paper and they're quite long, so it's really helpful for cutting out big bits of pattern. A Pritt stick for slashing and spreading pieces of pattern and sticking them back down. And then I use these retractable pencils because they give a continuous line of the same width and you don't have to keep sharpening them and they have a tiny little rubber at the other end if you go wrong. And then the final thing that is also very useful, but not 100% necessary is a meter long ruler. I actually hate this one because it's so horrible at the edges, like it catches the paper and rips it a bit. So <laughs> if you're gonna get a meter ruler, I don't recommend this one. I like the little plastic ones that you get at like school and unis, but they're actually really hard to find online. So I know my bodice is gonna cut off at the waist, so I don't actually need any more space on my master. 
to go under there. Basically what you're going to create is a grid on your pattern. So we always start out with the centre front line down here. I just set you guys up on my tripod so you can see what I'm doing. Start out by creating a line for my centre front. And then with your pattern master you want to square off a line that's going to run across the bust. And then you should be able to match up the pattern pieces. And you can go ahead and add a centre back seam. And then you're just going to trace out the block. So I'm going to start with the back and for the back I'm just having a little opening at the top and then on my master I have a dart that goes all the way up but I'm considering getting rid of that. So it's super easy to create this little um, opening at the back. I just decide how far I think it needs to go down and then I just draw it by eye <laughs> basically. It's always important to make sure that this will be big enough to get your head through. And I want my gathering to be here, um, near the center at the back. Um, so, so I'm gonna join the dart up to the sleeve and I'm gonna copy out all of this section here and move some space so that the back is extended. I've got my piece here and I'm going to hold it down by the armhole and I'm going to pivot it out. And so now your dart has actually moved from there to here and you can always test darts out by actually folding the paper. So I'm going to start by tracing out um, this top section of my front bodice. You just want to draw a few curved lines. Like so. And then they're going to be extended up. But I also want to extend this part here. So what I do is I number each section in case they get lost. <laughs> So that's roughly where I think everything's going to go. I'm going to stick these pieces down. And then I'm just going to square up this line and connect the um, shoulder seam. So this part is basically being disregarded and I'm gonna follow this line. This will be cut on the fold um, and then this will all get scrunched down. I'm gonna work on the sleeve pattern next and it's not a peasant sleeve, it's a leg of mutton sleeve. I knew it had a weird name. <laughs> but this is how I basically taught myself how to pattern cut, is if I'm struggling on what the pattern looks like, I just Google search it. So the sleeve pattern looks a bit like this. So this is like a normal sleeve pattern and this is the way they've slashed and spread it. But this one's actually a bit more simple. Basically you're just adding a lot, a lot of length in the top um, around the armhole so you can gather it all at the top here and it's going to puff out. <laughs> so technical. And then it will come in at the arm so you have all the volume up here and then nice and tight down there. So, Let's give this a go. Start out with a simple pattern. I'm going to do the bottom. And then I'm going to do a line all the way up the centre of the sleeve. You only really need to do the pattern for half 
of the sleeve so I think that's what I'm going to do it just makes life a bit simpler then you don't have to copy it on the other side and you can copy it when you're tracing it off so I'm going to measure it around my wrist and you want it big enough to get off your wrist off your hand <laughs> so mine's about eight inches so I'm just going to do four inches this side And I'm going to start by just roughly tapering that up. And then I'm going to find out the length of my arm from top to wrist. Okay, so 22 inches up here. So 22 inches up. And then I'm going to measure underneath my arm. So they're slashing from about here where the vol you want the volume to start. I would do the slash and divide stuff but I think I'm just going to um, do it by eye. So I'm just going to measure this, this length here, make sure it's the same length here and then extend this way up and I'm just going to by eye. Guess that that is it. You guys can't see that. So this was my original sleeve and then I've just extended it out and way up. So this is all gonna come crunching down and be like volume. So I've now done the pattern for the top bodice and the sleeve. So I'm gonna twirl those and see how they go before doing the skirt because if anything's wrong with the top part, then I might have to change the bottom part, um, so it's not worth doing it until I've tested out the top half, basically. So I'm going to trace off the pattern that I've just done, and then I'm going to cut it out in fabric and twirl it quickly. Okay, there we go. Those bits are now cut out. I'm gonna have a really quick little break, have a little drink, um, and then come back to this. I always find it really helpful to take little breaks, often when pattern cutting and sewing because it can get to your head and you can get frustrated very quickly. <laughs> I've got this far with the toile, ignore my awful darts at the front, I kind of put them in last minute thinking because I didn't like the gathering at the front. Um, but the sleeve is way too tight here, um, I just need to add like a centimetre on maybe two centimetres to that and I kind of want to make this a bit more poofy. The cowl neckline works really well, it's really hard to tell on this fabric but when it's in crepe it will like droop much nicer. And then at the back I have the little gathering at the bottom but I think I'm going to take that out and move the dart back to here and just have darts at the back. So yeah, I'm going to go and make those changes to the bodice now. I'm not going to bother re the bodice because I know it will fit once I've made these changes. Okay, so I've made the changes to the pattern and I've cut them out again. I also made a facing for the back. This is just instead of having to have two pieces this size, 
So yeah, that's now done and I'm going to move on to the skirt part. So to create the skirt, the first thing I do is find the waist here. And this has a dart of three centimeters. So I'm gonna have to find three centimeters along here and make a mark. And then I like to create like the start of the skirt and then I'll trace that off put it on a separate piece of paper and go from there I don't really like having darts on the skirt part if it's like a really fitted garment then I will but um, for this one I'm not going to do that so for the skirt part I'm going to gather it so basically this is my front section um, of the skirt the half of it and I'm going to chop it into four or three and I'm going to spread it out so that it creates a pattern piece. So this is what it looks like now. I've put four different sections and I have a line across the middle which means that when I spread it out it stays in the same position and it doesn't move up and down so the pattern is still the same size it's just been like expanded. I'm sorry. So I usually add about 12 centimeters in between each um, section when I'm doing a skirt section like this. So I start with the center line of the skirt, so the center front, and then you need to draw your line that matches all of the sections up. So I've just added my first spacing of 12 centimeters. And then I'm going to stick the next section just there. So this is as far as I've got with the skirt. I've now spaced out that pattern. And I'm going to work out how long I want my skirt to be. So this is the front skirt. So, so to do that I literally just take the tape measure and then I hold it where the bodice stops and sort of let it hang down and then I kind of just keep it in place <laughs> and figure out where it is I want the end to be. So I want 34.5 inches. 34.5. And then I'm going to taper that down a bit at the sides so the centre is going to be the highest point of the skirt. And I'm just going to bring it down just by eye. So that will be the middle of the front skirt and I've just sort of curved the line down. Now on my design I've actually added a seam that goes like this. So I'm going to add that in now. I've finished mapping out the skirt pattern and now I'm just tracing it off. <laughs> pattern pieces have been cut out now. I've decided not to twirl the skirt part of the dress just because I've made like so many dresses now that I'm hoping that it will be okay. So I'm going to show you the fabric I chose to make this dress in. I know I showed you at the start the two options but I think I'm going to make it in one of them first and then if it goes well then I'll make it in the other one as well. So this is the fabric I have for this dress. It is a really beautiful crepe fabric. I've got all the pieces over here and I'm going to get on and cut them out.
finished cutting out all the pattern pieces. So, are you being squeaky? Yes. <laughs> I have a Florence with me now. Currently 20 past eight. Um, and I'm considering stopping, maybe sewing a few darts and then carrying on with the rest tomorrow. Flory, that's really annoying. Might just have a nice early-ish night and um, have a clear head for making this in the morning because I feel like this fabric is not going to be the nicest to work with. I don't think it'll be the worst fabric I've ever had to work with but it's a bit slippy so we'll see. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. Morning guys, so I am now ready to start making the dress I was filming this morning for a little makeup Monday. But now the time is about 10.30 I think, maybe quarter to 11. Um, and I'm gonna start on this dress. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sew all of the darts. To mark out a dart, I like to just take a pin. So yeah, I will just take a pin, place it in the top of the dart, and then, often just using a pencil, I will take a few of the pins out from around it, and I will mark the back tiny little bit there and then also the front and the bottom of the dart um, I cut little notches in so this is the back piece and I will just pinch the top and bottom two notches make sure they're matched up and then with a dart you always sew from the big end down to the point. So I'm gonna go and sew all of my darts now. Okay, so I've sewn all the darts and I've sewn the gathering at the shoulder on the front. So to gather, I just do two rows of really loose wide stitch so I do it on setting number four on my machine and I also loosen the tension now I find it helps a lot so I just take the two threads and just pull it through and that gathers it up then this piece here is the back facing and I'm going to sew that to the back piece so this is good side to good side. Okay, and then I'm gonna sew all the way along the neckline and around and back up. I've now stitched the facing onto the front of the back and I actually overlocked as well because it just felt, I felt like it needed it because this fabric is a little see-through so if it looks uneven underneath then it doesn't look good. So I'm just going to turn this through and iron it down. There we go. Facing is now done on the back. So I'm just going to sew the neckline together at the front to become a facing. So I've just sewn the top neckline together, turned it through, and now I'm going to attach the shoulders to the back. Okay, we're looking good. The bodice is coming along. Got the front and the back. Obviously the sides will be sewn up, but I now do that after I've put the sleeves in. So next task is the sleeves. So this is my sleeve pattern. And I'm going to add gathering all the way along here um, and pull that together. A really important thing to note with sleeves is to always mark where your center is at the top of the shoulder, especially if you're gathering, it will just save you so much heartache. <laughs> this is half of the sleeve. So this is the whole sleeve pattern. I've got the gathering 
in the top and I'm just going to take the two bits and just pull it to gather it all up really hard to show you guys um, there's all the gathering that's gonna sit on the top of your shoulder so here's the bodice lying out flat we've got the back and the front and then the sleeve it's just gonna go on top just here and it's gonna get stitched around into the armhole so I'm just gonna sit and pin that in now and you want to find the center point for the shoulder and attach it right at the seam of the shoulder sleeves are both in and now I'm going to show you guys how to make a little um, insert that sort of like puffs up the sleeve. So this isn't a shoulder pad, I guess it's called a shoulder roll. I, I don't know. Well this stuff is called shoulder roll and it's basically like slightly padded. I'm going to show you guys how I make a little thing to go in the sleeve. So you'll need some scrap fabric and some scissors and all you want to do is I'm going to make them kind of small today I normally make them a bit longer but you're just going to want to cut four bits of shoulder roll the same size and then just put them together so you've got two, a section of fabric, you don't have to be too, you don't have to be neat about this but and then I will just overlock around here and then you have a nice little shoulder roll. So these are the finished little shoulder pad shoulder bump things and these sit inside just like that just add a bit more volume into the sleeve so to attach them I just find the shoulder seam and I like to put it just like this find the center and then the center here and then I will just zigzag stitch it down along here but now I'm going to work on the skirt part. So I have a curved seam in the middle of the skirt. So I'm going to go and sew those together quickly and then come back and show you guys what the skirt looks like. So I've now got the skirt and the bodice and I've done the gather around the inside and outside layer of the skirt. I decided to cut out an inside layer because this fabric's kind of see-through and that's like my biggest hatred in a dress. <laughs> so I didn't want whoever buys this wears this to have their pants on show all the time. It also gives the skirt some nice sort of weight and movement. So I'm going to now lay this out and even up the gathers and then attach it to the waistband. Finished attaching the skirt. I just popped it on to check it was all sort of fitting okay and looking all right. This I haven't sewn up this sleeve yet. I'm gonna put an invisible zip down the side here. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it's turning out.
zip is in. Nice working zip. And I'm just going to close up the rest of that seam now with the skirt. And then we can get on and hem it and do the last little bit and then we'll be done. I haven't caught up with you guys in a while. It is now Wednesday morning. Well, nearly afternoon. It is 11.48 and I had a job to film yesterday so I didn't do any sewing for this project. Um, it's quite nice to take a break from a sewing project as well. Just to take a breather and then when you get back to it you notice things that need changing or other things like that. But I think all that's left for me to do today is sew the label in, hem up the sleeves and oh and add a little button and like hook an eye thing at the back so yeah i'm gonna get on and do that and show you guys what the final dress looks like Sewn the label in and the little button and the sleeves are done so the dress is finished. I'm gonna go and put it on so you guys can see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm gonna take you guys to the mirror so you can see it properly. I'm so happy with how this dress has turned out. So here is the finished dress. I think my favourite part is probably the sleeves and the neckline. I just really really love it. And then the skirt has the seam that curves around all the way down to the back. So that worked out really nicely and you can't see my pants through the skirt either. <laughs> so yeah, that is the finished dress. So these are the other items in my little collection that I've been making. So these all need a steam and just to be sorted out a little bit. But I thought I'd give you a little sneaky peek. I'm going to end this video here. Well done if you got this far, because I feel like this is going to be a very long video. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you're going to try out a bit of sewing for yourself, or if you want to stay updated with all of my sewing work and everything, I will leave the link to my Instagram and my design Instagram account. Um, this will all go up on my design Instagram account, but I will probably be linking it from my main Instagram account as well. So if you're not following me on there, then they will all be linked down below. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.